Hi, welcome to the Creative Cow DSLR Essentials Podcast. My name is Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carver. And today we are talking about ISO. ISO. How far is too far? Well, it's some it's a great debate. I mean, if you look at you know forums out there like the Creative Cow, and you you know search the web for people's preference about ISO, you know one of the things you're going to find is that it's a pretty heated debate, right? You know, people yeah. say, oh, you can't go that high, or you know, you never should shoot you know this or that, and it, it, it's a debate for sure. People have been arguing about it, f you know, for for years. Well, I think the longer you've been at it the more conservative you likely are because, you know, you just remember getting burned or making poor choices, you know. Yep. I mean, you know, just to sort of put things quickly in context, we've, we've brought ISO up before, yep. and it is related to a lot of the standards that are out there. So, you know, we used to have the ASA standard and right. the DIN standard, and ISO was the International Organization Standard. Right. And it, it sort of pulled these things together, and yes, they it's French, so the S and the International O. International Standards Organization, correct? Yes, but they, they do the International <laughs> Organization on Standards, or right, yeah, yeah, yeah. bad French accent, it's all good. Um, so you had that, mm -hmm. and they you know this sort of combined these measurement scales together. And you know originally this was for film speed, and then we moved into digital, and it's trying to simulate that, just like the old days of measuring the speed of the film. Absolutely, I mean, a, a good way to think about what ISO is is just a way of sort of increasing the sensitivity of the sensor, right? Yeah. It has a native sensitivity, and then we're applying some fancy math and electronics going on to increase that sensitivity of the sensor. So we're juicing it. We're juicing it, right. Mm -hmm. And the more that you juice, I mean, this is where the whole debate comes in, right? Because uh, on a theoretical level, the more juice, if you will, the more that you raise that ISO, some bad things can happen, right? You're going to be raising the sensitivity of that sensor, so it's going to be capable of sort of capturing more light, right? It's going to, yeah. you raise your ISO from 100 up to, say, 1600, you're going to have a lot brighter image, right? Um, but the, the downside of it is that potentially raising your ISO does things like increasing noise in the image. Yeah, well, it's just like a microphone, sort of like if you were in post going to add gain sure. after recording an audio, audio track. You know, yes, you can make things louder, but at a certain point, you start to notice hiss and background sound. Yep. And it's the same general concept. I mean, obviously, audio and light are two different things. Sure. But for those of you with a background working with video, I'm sure a lot of you could relate to that idea. You can get, there's a certain threshold you can go. The things keep changing with these cameras. I mean, like my camera here, ISO sensitivity, is going to go all the way up to, to 6400, which to me just sounds insane, and that's a 70. Yeah, I mean, and this has a high mode that's similar, you know, can go 12,000 something or other, and some of the, 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 the pro bodies like the 1D and those kind of things, I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy high numbers see in the dark, you know? Yeah, I mean, literally, we've seen people put these cameras all the way cranked up, put them in a dark room and roll like a surveillance camera, and it's actually seeing something. Now, it's not seeing that beautiful filmic image that we all Might love. Be a little noisy, yeah. Just, just a tad. So, obviously, you got to find that right balance, and, and you've got a good test that you could use on yeah. any camera to sort of see what's your threshold. Well, right, because the, the thing about this is that it comes down to two things. It's a technical, like what you're actually seeing in the image, and then it, it's more of a subjective thing, right? What you're willing, or your clients, or you know, the filmmakers are willing to put up with. And the first thing about that is that on the subjective side of thing is, you need to test this out and figure out what, you know, along with all the other parts of exposure like shutter speed and aperture and what lenses you're using, you need to test out your ISO performance to see if it's something subjectively you're going to be happy with. On the technical side of things, yeah, one of the things I like to do is because every camera is different. I found that even using multiple 7Ds or same 5Ds or on the Nikon side, every camera is a slightly little bit different. And the thing that confuses a lot of people is that you would think that if you had an ISO of say 320, that that lower ISO, because it's not as much juice, if you will, not, the sensitivity is not as high, would be cleaner than, say, 500, right? right? And in my own experience, and I think a lot of people out there on the forums and stuff have, have found this as well, it's not necessarily true. There's often a stair-stepping where, like, you know, what we often say is, is you know, okay, just because you hit one that looks bad, Mm -hmm. Don't immediately assume, like, you know, you start seeing, oh, that's just a little too much noise. Don't immediately go down one. Consider right. going up one, because sometimes it's a combination of, you know, lots of different things. The chip, there's native ISOs, there's you know, assisted. And so one of the things that I like to do is just to simply put my lens cap on the front of the camera, right? And I'll hit record on the camera, right? You know, just go into record. Um, and so right now, I'm at an ISO of 100. And okay. those of you who are wondering why all of a sudden the podcast went black, <laughs> Where it's not actually black. Notice right. there's the little red dot, exactly. and there's the number gauge at the bottom. So We're I'll, showing you noise. So I'll record, you know, whatever, a couple seconds at ISO 100. I'll stop, right? And then I'll go into my ISO, ISO settings, 
and let's just skip over a few here. Let's go up to say, you know, 320, right? Sure. And I'll select that, and then I'll go ahead and hit record again, and I'll go through this process, right, a couple times. Let's stop that. Let's go ISO again, and let's jump up to say something real high. Let's go up to like 2,000, right? I'll hit uh, ISO, and then record. And then what I do is after I go through this process a couple times, I'll bring these, because you know you don't want to use your LCD to judge this noise, you know? I'll ingest. You mean you can't see things clearly on that little tiny fine screen you have there? <laughs> exactly. So I'll bring this footage into my machine, you know, whether I'm using Final Cut or Premiere or whatever it may be, and I'll just bring up these separate clips with their different ISO set, set, uh, settings and just look at them, you maybe even zoom in a little bit and see where I'm noticing the noise. And I've been pleasantly surprised over, you know, over the years of owning uh, both Canon 5D and uh, Mark II and 70s and now you know, the 60D, is that each camera is slightly a little different. So I do this test just to see, okay, I know that you know, this particular ISO is a little bit more cleaner than this one and so on and so forth, so that when I get out in the field, I have sort of you know a little bit of a laundry list of ISOs that I'll go to as I'm stepping up the list because I mean if you now look go at all the way up to the top just so that people at home can start to see the noise. Right. So if I go all the way up to 128 here, right? You should what you should notice. We'll just do a little chord here. You should notice is that it's quite a bit noisier than it was at say 100, of course, right? Yeah, and the good thing here, remember, you know, we're seeing metadata with the overlays, but you're not going to see those overlays normally when you record your clips. Right. We're recording the output of the camera here, so we're seeing, you know, all the ISOs labeled on right, the bottom. Exactly. So you know, say ISO 400. Right. Camera test. Ex you know, exactly. And, and so I'll just go through that process and figure out you know, again which the best ones are, are, are for me because as I look at the list of ISOs for this, you know, there's a lot of different ISOs to choose from. So by doing this test, I'll maybe have you know six or so of them that I know that as I step up through the, through the range, these are the ones for my particular camera that are going to perform the best. And obviously, auto is a choice there, but that could be inherently dangerous, right? <laughs> yeah, auto I, uh, ISO is a little dangerous, right? Because you know it's one of those things where just like other automatic functions of the camera, it's constantly changing. Well, and and we pretty much say that all the time. Like you know, if you want to move from amateur to pro, yep. get out of auto mode because auto is going to make an adjustment at the absolute worst time. I like the mistake to rest with me rather than something the camera's doing, right? Yeah. Because at least that way my client can yell at me and I, you know, whatever. Right, you know, <laughs> bad camera. Right. Exactly. Go to your room. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, all of these are things we can deal with and obviously in, in other episodes we've talked about other factors. Yep. This test with the black cap, this works. Yep. There certainly is some benefit if you are maybe doing a studio setup or you have the opportunity to get multiple takes and you're concerned. Oh, oh for sure. I, I, I mean, there's no substitute for actual footage when you're testing ISO, right? Because different lighting situations, different people's skin tones, you know, if you're wearing a black shirt, you might notice it more than me wearing a white shirt, that kind of stuff. Yeah. This is just a simple test to get in the ballpark, but by no means is it a complete substitute for getting out there under realistic shooting conditions and repeating the same kind of test. So subjectively and technically, you'll know which ISOs or work best for your camera and for your given shooting situation. So the lens cap test is sort of your lab test. Yeah. And then, you know, we always say to folks, whenever you get a new camera, even if you're an experienced shooter, even if it's the same model as the camera you had before, yep. take a day to go out and do a test shot and, and on that shoot that you're out there, you know, roll at different ISOs, try different lenses, see what you notice. And you know, remember, you're gonna see that noise most often in the shadows. So don't just go and shoot on a bright sunny day yeah. and then show up and do a low light shoot in a hospital or a concert and go, wow, that's really noisy. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you bring up a good point too. I mean, as I said, every camera is different within the same, even within the same camera line. So 170D to another 7D might be, you know, subtly different. Well, but it could have been manufactured over a three month period, you know, things sure. change. And especially when you're doing, when shooting in a situation with multiple cameras, like if I'm shooting with a 5D, which has a much bigger, you know, not much bigger, but a bigger sensor than the 7D, the ISO performance is going to be different due to the native size of that sensor. So it's important, if you're, especially when you're shooting with multiple cameras, different manufacturers or different models, that you, you know, do these tests and sort of get the, the, the balance point for all your cameras for ISO performance. So to ultimately answer the question about how much is too much, I think we have to put it this way. Uh, I have found that 
it's not good to tell people how much is too much because everybody's preference, everybody's taste is going to differ. My personal preference for this particular camera, like the 7D, is I find that 1600 mark to be about my threshold, my personal threshold, to yeah. where I start going, ugh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in your in your own work, you might see it. You know, might see it a little different. You might like you know higher ISOs and that kind of stuff. So there's no such thing as a definitive line about how much is too much. It's not like you know 180 degree sh uh, shutter rule or you know all these other technical things. It's a preference thing. How close to the edge of the cliff are you willing to stand? Right. And for me, that's about 1600. But as these you know do, new, on the 7D, it's about 1600. Maybe a little higher on the, on the 5D. Um, but as new cameras come out, this is stuff that you're going to constantly have to test and 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 re go over because you know the sensitivities of the sensors changing, the noise characteristics, all that kind of stuff. Great. So hopefully that answers it for you. Well, like you said here, this is really a personal choice that's yep. going to be based upon your experience with your gear Absolutely. and the fact that you have to test your gear. Yep. But you're going to want to figure this out for yourself. Take your camera out there, do Rob's lens ca lens cap test. You know, go on a couple of test shoots, figure out what your camera is capable of. Hopefully this makes sense. Absolutely. Great. For Creative Cow, my name is Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. And head on over to creativecow.net where there's great forums on DSLR as well as the podcast that you can check out in HD or SD and Creative Cow Magazine. Thanks again.